Hi, in this video, we will learn how to simulate a click animation. Now watch this closely. We have a circle and we have a shadow here. On a click, we will have a cursor come in and click on this circle simulating the click motion. Did you see that? Now let me show you how that works on a rectangle. Isn't that fun? Now where can you use such an animation? Let me show you. Here we have a list of things to do. We have three items. I want to check off each one of those. On a click, we have the cursor coming in and checking off the first one after a click motion. Another one, another one. Isn't that beautiful? Now at the face of it, it might look like a simple animation, but behind the scenes, there's a lot going on. And learning those elements will help you improve your animation skills. So let us learn how to create this click animation simulation from scratch. But before that, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com, the creator of comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle, a collection of more than 4,500 premium animated PowerPoint templates that help you make presentations that are beautiful and engaging. First, let us set up the shapes that make for the animation. Let me go to shapes, pick up the rectangle tool, and draw a rectangle like so and we can always choose the color we want and we can have no outline or we can have white outline it is completely up to you let me create a duplicate of this by pressing ctrl d and keep this slightly off like this and then let us choose a darker color because we are trying to simulate a shadow here let us not have any outline and then let us send this back to make it look a little more realistic, I'm going to right click, go to format shape, go to effects option and choose soft edges and choose a very slight soft edge effect. The second one is pretty good, two and a half points. Now that does look like a very nice shadow. Now the benefit of using this shadow instead of using the shadow effect on this rectangle is it is possible for you to move this rectangle on top of this simulating that it is covering that and it is getting dipped onto the surface and then it comes out after the click. So that is what is the whole effect we are going for. Now to do that we are going to use motion path animation. So let us select this rectangle, go to animations, then go to motion path animation and choose lines and by default the direction is to the down. Now we are going to have this sit right on top of this shadow here. So that is what we are trying to achieve. And it's not very easy to do because the end point tends to almost stick close to the starting point and we need to do this a couple of times before we achieve the end result. Can you see here? This looks perfect. Now I may have to adjust the shadow behind to match this because that is much easier to achieve. So I'm going to use my down arrow key to click a few times down and to the left just to make sure that the end point coincides beautifully with the shadow here. Now that looks pretty neat. When I go to slideshow, you can see the effect here. On a click, you can see that this is sitting on top of the rectangular bar at the bottom simulating that this is getting pressed or clicked. Now we need to have this happen very fast. So let us select this, go to animation pane so you can see what I'm going to do. Let us select this by default, the duration is for two seconds. Let us have this for just 0.25 seconds and hit enter. And it is not enough when it goes down, it also needs to come back. So let us go to the animation event, go to effect options, and we are going to use this option called auto reverse. And we don't need to have a smooth start and smooth end if you don't like. We can have this as zero and say okay. Now when I go to slideshow, you can see the effect. Yeah, did you see? It goes down and comes back. It's pretty neat. Now this needs to happen on the click of a cursor. So we are going to have a cursor drawn. So let us go to shapes and let us use block arrows to do that. And this is the arrow I'm going to use called arrow up. Let us draw the arrow and this doesn't look so much like a cursor. So I'm going to make some adjustments. I'm going to pull down this yellow handle. Now that looks more like it and I can choose any color. Maybe I can choose dark color. That is good enough. Shape outline, no outline. And let me change the angle a little bit. So it comes and clicks on top of this rectangle. Now, how does it enter the scene? 
it needs to enter with a float in animation so let us go to animation and let us have a simple float in animation so that is how it enters the scene and this happens first so it comes into the scene and then it needs to simulate a click so how do we make that simulation happen you select this cursor again and we are going to add another animation let us go to add animation option and this time i'm going to use grow shrink animation let us go to the animation event go to effect options and say auto reverse and it is going to shrink so how much is it going to shrink it is going to shrink to the point of around 75 percent so that is what we have chosen here i have chosen custom and set 75 and i'm going to hit enter and then we are going to say okay this also needs to happen right after it comes from down so we have float in and right after that which means we are going to say after previous and we are going to have the same duration 0.25 seconds and hit enter since we had used auto reverse you would notice that it shrinks in size and then goes back to its original size and right with that we are going to have this movement of this rectangle so we are going to say this which is the movement of this rectangle happens with previous so there are three animations the first animation is for the cursor to float in and right after that it shrinks and gets back to size and while that happens we will have this rectangle cover this black rectangle and then come back to its original position so that is what we are trying to do here when i go to slideshow on a click we have float in and then it creates that click effect now right after that we are going to have a tick option here and that is very simple to achieve all you need to do is to use a simple text box and then go to symbol and then search for wingdings go all the way down and look for w wingdings is here and then once you go down you would be able to find the tick mark this is the one that we are looking for and say insert close now we can increase the size of this by increasing the font size so let me go here and make it maybe 66 or whatever size that i prefer maybe this is pretty good now i can either leave this the way it is or i can make this into a shape if you want to make it into a shape all you need to do is to use a rectangular shape and draw on top of that and then select both of the elements and then go to merge shapes and say shape intersect now this is a shape we are going to use a simple green color here let us go to shape outline and say no outline and let us use a nice preset so let us go to preset and i'm going to use this preset it is called preset 4 now that looks as if this is floating on the surface which is in line with what we have been doing here everything has a shadow and the effect is pretty similar and let this be wiped from left to right so let us go to animations and say wipe from left and this happens after previous so when i go to slideshow comes in clicks and you have the first thing ticked off of course to make it useful you can write whatever text that you want on top of it i'm going to use a separate text box for it and not use this box itself because it's much easier for me to work with it later on this is sample text and i can increase the font size and I can place this right on top of this and choose a font color that contrasts from the background. Now that looks pretty beautiful. Now if I want to make multiple events, all I need to do is to select this, press Ctrl D and I can place this right below this and I can replace this with any other text of my choice and I can have as many of these events as I want and that will make for a very interesting list of things to do if you are a busy presenter who doesn't have the time to create these kind of elaborate animations you can always go for our comprehensive all-in-one powerpoint bundle where we have 4500 of such premium animated powerpoint templates to help you visualize anything that you have in mind the link to this product is in the description box below the video if you want to join our five day free email course called 25 creative powerpoint ideas where i share 25 useful and practical powerpoint ideas that i have not shared elsewhere you can click on the link that you see right now on your screen and join that email course